Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be continuing my quest to remake all of my old Microsoft Plus videos and that means we're moving on to Microsoft Plus for Windows XP. This was released alongside Windows XP back on October 25th, 2001, and it originally sold for around $40. Now you can see the price tag on here is $32.95, so whoever bought this got it, I assume, a little after it initially launched. But much like Plus 95 and 98, Plus XP comes with various enhancements and additional programs for Windows that just allow you to enhance Windows XP and, and bring some extra functionality to it. And the box here, you know, much like all of the Plus packages, they are designed similarly to the main operating system box, and that makes these look very nice on a shelf together, because on the spine here you can see they follow a similar layout, which is nice, because I do have all of these boxes on a shelf. So, the Plus XP box here includes this nice flap here on the front where you can open up and it talks about some of the various features. You can see we've got some media player skins. There were some visual styles, but they were pretty lame, honestly, compared to what we had in Plus 95 and 98. And I mentioned that in the original Plus XP video, and I will probably mention it a few times in this one, so uh, brace yourselves. But, yeah, so it would tell you a little bit about some of the features and some of the things that it included. And on the back here, you've got kind of the same thing thing going on. If we open it up, we've got, uh, much like with Windows XP, the actual software comes in a folder here, and we'll set the box aside. There's nothing else in here, no cardboard insert like we had with previous Plus versions and Windows versions. The folder here, you got your single installation disk, and you have a start here booklet, which I believe, uh, actually the product key is not on the back. I think the product key, is there no product key associated with this? I don't think there is. Interesting. Uh, yeah, because Plus 98, which we just took a look at, had a product key that you had to enter. So yeah, this is your little contents booklet and it just tells you about plus for xp it goes through all of the various features and things in detail which i will certainly be referring back to as we go on through this video but that's pretty much all there is to say about the unboxing experience so let's go ahead and swap over to a windows xp computer and we'll take a look at what plus xp had to offer all right so we're going to pop our plus xp cd into the dell latitude d610 which is our laptop of choice for this video and we'll proceed with the installation process now it has been a while since I've taken a look at Plus XP, though I've kind of said that in every one of the Plus videos, but it's true. So it'll be kind of neat to go through this again. And I'm kind of surprised, like, is there really no product key? Which, I mean, I don't think there is. There's nothing on this folder at all. So that's kind of interesting. I know Plus Digital Media Edition, which came after this, used Microsoft product activation, which is where you had to call in or activate over the internet, which you could do with XP as well. And in fact, I did a video of activating Plus DME back in, I think that was early 2021 or late 2020, whichever it was. And yeah, there's no product key screen or anything. I probably mentioned that in the last video and I, I, I would imagine I was kind of surprised as well. But again, it's just been a little while since I have taken a look at this. And I didn't watch the last video or any of the prior Plus videos before making any of these videos because I wanted to kind of re-experience this myself because it's been, like I said, a long time since I've uh, taken a look at this stuff. So we've got your four categories here. You've got themes, four plus themes. You've got your screen savers, which you have more than just for the four plus themes. You've got some additional ones here. You've got your games and you have your digital media components, which even though, again, this wasn't digital media edition, you did have some digital media focused stuff in here, just not as much as you had in digital media edition. So we'll hit next and we will install. And while it's copying files, it goes through a little slideshow here, it looks like of some various things to talk about. So same stuff on the box, I would imagine. Media player skins, the CD label maker. Oh yeah, that's right. And there we go, our installation's finished. We're going to go ahead and start Microsoft Plus for Windows XP now. Now, one of the things that makes Plus XP different from 95 and 98 is instead of having individual programs in your all programs menu, you just have a single thing that takes you to this launcher program where you can launch everything from. So you've got those same four categories. We can go to digital media, and we're just gonna pretty much go down the list here. We're gonna start with the Plus voice command for Windows Media Player. So 
it's like a voice recognition thing to where you can tell it media player play or media player stop and you know it will apparently listen to you and hopefully actually work it should work anyways if i actually plug in a microphone so i've got the uh, microphone test wizard opened up here and we've got our lovely apple microphone here from I don't know, sometime in the 90s probably, and we're going to plug that into the microphone jack on the side of the laptop, and you can see that, uh, well, okay, apparently it just stopped there. Uh, there we go. So you can see that the uh, audio meter on the recording end there is showing up, so hooray. We can, uh, we're going to move this up here, hit next, and oh boy, oh my gosh, there we go. <laughs> so you get that great audio quality. And it's slightly delayed as well when I'm talking into it, which is really uh, lovely. Okay, so we're just going to cancel out of that. Anyways, so let's go ahead and start. And it should just... Uh, okay, so it opens up a little wizard here. Welcome to Plus Voice Command for Windows Media Player. And we're going to say, I want Plus Voice Command to run as the only speech recognition program. We have nothing else on here, so that's what we'll select. We're going to configure microphone, and we'll hit next. I am using the microphone wizard. It is adjusting uh, the volume to my microphone. Okay, hit next. Read the following sentence in your everyday tone of voice. This papaya tastes perfect. That's not my everyday tone of voice, but you know, whatever. Okay, click available commands. So let's see what these commands are. Commands for controlling playback. So fast forward, mute, mute off, next. Oh, okay, and remember to precede each command with the call sign, for example, media player fast forward. So we're gonna test that out. I've got a few audio files on a USB drive here. We'll plug that into the laptop. Yay, so we're gonna open that up and we've got a few MP3s. We've got uh, a converted MP3 of passport.mid and we have some WAV files as well. Let's go ahead and turn on uh, show hidden, or not hidden, but well, yeah, we wanna show hidden files, but also uncheck hide file extension so we can see what is what and let's just open up one of these in media player so let's do the outro theme that i always do bet on it from silent partner a wonderful piece of music so let's try to say we'll click the, the microphone oh it's been listening this entire time okay so we'll click it media player stop look at that media player play Media player pause. Okay, media player froze for a bit. Media player pause. Media player play. Simple as that. I, I gotta say, I, I really like that. Okay, so let's say we want to make a playlist of bet on it. We'll grab Mining by Moonlight. And we'll just go with that because these are two songs from the YouTube audio library. So we'll right click. We will, we could just hit play in playlist or we'll do add to playlist and we'll make a new one called uh, YT. Media player next. Media player next. There we go. So yeah, pretty cool. Next up we have the MP3 audio converter. So if we go in here, it says with plus MP3 audio converter, you can free up half the disk space used by MP3 audio files by converting them to Microsoft Windows Media Audio files with a WMA file name extension. So we'll hit start here and we can choose a, you have it search a folder or pick a specific audio file, we'll just do that. And we're going to add, uh, I've got the remastered version of the XP welcome music from the legendary Stan Lepard, rest in peace. So we'll go ahead and select that and we will hit next. Now you can change the bit rate. You can have it automatically to determine the quality or you could use, you know, a, a specified bit rate if you wanted to have a really small file. We'll just go with 192 to get the, the best possible quality out of this file. So we'll hit next, we'll hit start conversion and that's pretty much all there is to it. Oh, and I just noticed that this is not even an MP3 that we converted, but it goes to show you that it works with other audio files as well. So we'll hit uh, exits and we'll hit yes. We'll go back to my music. And right here you see we have a WMA file, which takes up 7.46 megabytes. The original WAV file took up 81.9 megabytes. And why don't we give it a brief listen? It's such a great song, I have to say. Definitely one of my favorite Windows-related tracks. 
And of course we do have the original here, uh, though apparently that can't even be played on here. So also if you have a file that Windows Media Player can't even open, you can also use this even if it's not at the best possible quality. So yeah. There you go. Very, very nice piece of software, though. I mean, there were other MP3 converters you could get as well. This is just Microsoft's one. Next up is the Plus CD Label Maker. Now, we don't have a printer set up as it lets us know here, so we're not going to bother doing that. I think we can... Oh, can we not even open it up? Okay, well, we can just like set up a printer that we don't have. We'll just say like local printer. So you've got, uh, you know, this is for like audio CD. So it tells you your, your various playlists here, uh, or if you had a CD put in the drive and you want to make a label for that. So we'll go ahead and choose our YT playlist here that we just made and we'll hit next. And you've got a bunch of different templates in here for various labels you could buy in the store. So we'll go with like an Avery CD insert 8693 and so you've got the left spine the back right side and the front of the jewel case and we can make it whatever we want so like my songs uh, the left spine will just make the same thing you can choose image settings you can use whatever image you want we can use i don't know maybe one of the sample photos blue hills and you would print it that's that's basically it so next up, we've got the speaker enhancement, which it says it instantly boosts the clarity and richness of many computer speakers to make your music and video more vibrant than ever. This is just something it adds to Windows Media Player itself. So if we go in here, let's see if it even shows up in this newer version. So it's under tools plus speaker enhancement. There it is. It's enabled now. So... I mean, it, it's not going to make much of a difference on the internal speakers here. So, yeah, this is kind of one of those things that I just can't really demo very well for you. But we do have some other things. we got three more items in the digital media category, beginning with personal DJ. So this is a playlist creation tool. If we start it up here... So you can select the music categories you want, specify your playlist settings, review and name your playlist, and play it. So we'll hit next here. If you've noticed, all these wizards pretty much follow a similar uh, style, though they do have like different background colors and images and all that. So you would pick a music category, which it has already some of these audio files have albums associated with it. So like YouTube Audio Library, this is not something I made. This is just, you know, in the metadata of those audio files. So we'll go ahead and select that. And maybe under artist, we want uh, silent partner. Why not? So we'll add that. Hit next. You can choose the duration. So, you know, if you had a bunch of audio files and you only wanted like a 20 minute playlist, you could select that here or you could go by the size to cap it at a specific size. Uh, you can favor, you know, based how frequently you play songs. So if you want songs you like never play on media player, you could have it pick those songs. Of course, we don't have an entire music library, so we're not going to be able to do much with this. Uh, but we'll see what it picks. I'm kind of curious. Of course, there's only like two songs that it can pick from. So yeah, it says there's not enough audio files uh, in here. So it just picked a bet on it by Silent Partner. Okay, so we'll hit play. And, you know, there it is. Yeah, plus personal DJ. Now, the media player skins, these are, are pretty exciting, along with the 3D visualization. So, you've got four skins, and they're all contained in media player if we go to media player again. Yeah, you already have a bunch of skins included with Windows XP, but the plus ones are all labeled plus. So, you've got space, nature, da Vinci, and aquarium. We're just going to apply the aquarium skin, and so... There it is. Now, these go with some of the themes. So what we might as well do is just jump to the themes here. So I think we're done with the, you know, we still have the 3D visualizations. But if you go to the themes here, you've got Aquarium, Space, Nature, and Da Vinci. So we've got the uh, Aquarium one right now. So we can just click on, I believe, you can just hit select this theme here and it should pop up the display properties. So there it is. So we'll hit apply. And this way you can see how well that the media player skin blends in with the theme. Now, I've mentioned this before, but in my opinion, these themes just aren't really that great. I mean, it's nice that they've included them in here for sure, but 
they're not as uh, involving, if that makes any sense, compared to the Windows 95 and 98 ones, because there's no like additional visual style. You know, it just picks one of the default Luna styles, whether that's blue, silver, or olive green. So like this one here, you know, it looks like the you know the regular Windows XP theme, the default one. It's just the blue Luna theme. But yeah, you have a new cursor, you've got a, a new wallpaper, and you've got a new you know sound pack as well. But it would have been nice if they had made like a special visual style for these themes. So yeah, that's just my opinion on this. I still think it's cool that they've bundled these themes. And again, it's going to kind of be the same case with 95, 98, where some of the sounds are going to be rather obnoxious. Some of them are going to be fine, like this one here. I don't know if I want to hear that every time that I minimize and restore a window. So yeah, maybe the... I think the restore ones like maybe fine, but this like that's kind of loud and rather obnoxious. But anyway, so here's the um, media player skim, and you can see how well that it, it just kind of goes with this with this background here. So you know I think it's pretty nice. It is really large. Of course, we are running this at uh, 800 by 600, so <laughs> uh, you can see that the media player like takes up uh, the majority of the of the screen space. But now I think we can go. Uh, right, the skins only apply in the compact mode. So, you know, like just to show you here, this here, if we go to skin mode, or, or it's just called skin mode, actually, not compact mode. But yeah, so the default skin is just called Windows XP. And so if I were to apply this, this is how it looks in the skin mode now. And then we can jump back to full mode. And then let's say we want to go to the uh, space one now. Why not? And we'll go ahead and hop into, let's just go back to display properties here and change this to the uh, space theme. Out of all of the themes bundled with XP+, plus, the space one is my favorite. I mean, I do like space. So, you know, that honestly not super surprising. But yeah, so your uh, cursor here changes to like a space shuttle. And it just applies the silver luna variant which if i had to pick a luna variant i mean the default one is obviously pretty iconic i mean let's be real i, I definitely use that one the most over the course of my many years using windows xp but i definitely had it on the silver variant and the uh, olive green one uh, pretty often as well so here you go uh you got your sound effects there and you've got the uh sound effects for minimizing and restoring a window and we'll go ahead and hit play on media player here now the visualizations remain the same uh, there are visualizations that are included with plus but it's not like there's anything unique to the the media player skin playing in here these are just your standard visualizations so you know we could change those if we want to we could uh go to you know this one here just hit random you know there you go so gosh isn't this song super great like i when i first discovered this like God, that must have been 20... I don't know, when did I start using it? It must have been 2014, 2015. Um, maybe a little bit after that. But I just thought this would fit so good for like an outro theme. Yeah, it's not the end of the video yet, though. Uh, we still, <laughs> still have a lot to talk about. So, yeah, that's the space uh, visual style and media player skin. And we'll jump over to, uh, let me just go back to full screen mode here, or not full screen, but full mode. And so we did the uh, aquarium one. We'll jump to nature next. Why not? So we'll hit uh, apply. And so this one's pretty neat looking. And I think the nature, does this do the olive green? Yes, it does. I think that's rather fitting for a nature related theme. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and do the the sound effects here so i mean i guess you you can decide if you think that's obnoxious or, or fine to to just have every time you minimize or restore a window i think generally the sounds well with the exception of the horror theme in windows 98 or whatever it was where it played that really obnoxious like uh, sound every time you went into the start menu and went into one of the program groups but Aside from that, the ones I've seen are pretty, like, fine, you know? I just like really simple things like this as you're going around. And I guess we can play Media Player a little bit there, so you can see how that goes. Again, nothing nothing unique to here at all. And so that's the... Which one didn't we do? We didn't do the Da Vinci uh, theme, so we'll apply that one here. And we'll go to Media Player here, and gosh, that is... <laughs> That is a bit obnoxious. And we'll go, no, not the full screen. 
go to full mode. You could easily click the wrong one there, and we'll set this to the Da Vinci theme. So there it is, or the skin rather. So yeah, definitely fits in nicely with the wallpaper here. And yeah, there you go. So I think, uh, gosh, I, I think I'm gonna leave it on the space theme for the rest of the video, or I guess I could show you some more of the sounds here before we switch to that. So yeah, in the minimize. Yeah, so uh, they are kind of long, the uh, sounds there for restoring and minimizing. But yeah, I, I do like the space theme. It is my favorite out of all of these. So we're gonna swap back to that. And we'll take a look at the media player visualizations next. Luckily, all of them are labeled plus, so or they're in a, a plus folder rather. So if we go to now playing, we'll just restart bet on it here. And we'll right click and we'll go into the plus category. And we've got three of them here. Oddworld, Munch's Odyssey, Max's Kingdom and Undersea Wonder. So we'll select this one here and you get some plus branding as it loads up. And there you go. So. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is, I think it said this was for an Xbox game, right? Uh, yeah, see the star of the Xbox game, Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. I've never played that before, though to be fair, I haven't played much of the original Xbox. <laughs> okay, so he definitely like gets really animated there. Why don't we put on something else? Let's go back to our media library. I've got a bunch of other unknown. Okay, I've used some of Stevia's music in uh, in my videos, especially the long form documentaries. Really great music. I'd highly recommend uh, checking out. I'll have the uh, SoundCloud, or no, it's not on SoundCloud. It's on Bandcamp. I'll, I'll have that link down below. I mean, I'm I'm gonna credit these songs anyway, so you can go down there and check that out if you want. But yeah. Got a bit of a skip there, that wasn't the song itself. So we'll jump to Max's Kingdom here. <laughs> Man, it keeps skipping like that, that kind of sucks. But, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is really funny. Oh, you know what? I've got a great idea. Let's go back to Media Library. We've got uh, Rick.mp3. You want to guess what this is? Yep. <laughs> that is just too funny. And so we'll actually, we'll just leave it playing and we'll swap to the. I think you can hit the button here, right? Yeah. So you got some jellyfish going there. <laughs> I just think it's funny with just Rick up here at the top left. Like, come on. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll play one more song. Why not? Ah, oh, passport. Yeah, this is that MP3 converted passport mid. I gotta say, this is my favorite one out of all of them. Like, no contest. <laughs> oh my god, that is too good. So those are the visualizations. Uh, and that's pretty much it, I think, for the media player stuff. So yeah, that's everything in the digital media category. We took a look at the themes. Before we get to the games, we're going to jump into the screensavers because you have, you know, one for each of the three uh, or four rather themes in here. You've got one for aquarium, space, nature, and Da Vinci. But you also have robot circus, sand pendulum, mercury pool, and a pictures one. So... Let's just uh, hit preview. We'll go to aquarium first, and I think it'll actually just, yeah, that's really nice. It just previews it from here. 
And I actually remember this. I don't know if it was this particular screensaver, but I had an aquarium screensaver just like this. And I thought it was the coolest thing back then. And to be honest, it kind of was. I mean, I, I was really, really into screensavers. Of course, this was like, what, early to mid-2000s? So, I mean, screensavers were still pretty common back then. And, uh, yeah, I, I loved customizing my screensaver, finding all sorts of ones online that I would download. And, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. I think doing, like, an entire video on screensavers would be kind of neat. Just go through... This is like another case of me getting a video idea while doing a video. But I think it'd be cool just to go through a bunch of screensavers. Because, you know, they're not used nowadays nearly as often as they were. Uh, you know, really the only people who are going to use them are people who have CRTs on like vintage computers or whatever. Um, because they don't serve a, a, a function on a non-CRT system other than just to say you have it. Um, but yeah... So that's pretty cool. And the My Pictures one, I think just, it's a pretty basic, like, yeah, you have to have stuff in My Pictures. But let's go to, you know what, I don't have any photos on here. But we can drag them in, like, we can drag the ones in Sample Pictures just into the root of the My Pictures folder. So we'll select all these, copy, and we'll go up to My Pictures and paste. Now if we hit preview, yeah, it just cycles through your photos. It's a photo screensaver. I think there are some animations maybe like I saw on this thing, or maybe that's just to illustrate that it's multiple photos. I don't know if there's a cube thing like this, but maybe there's, if we go to the screensaver properties, we should be able like to go to settings. Let me actually pick the right one here. Well, first let's see the aquarium. Let's see if there are settings associated with it. There are, you could turn on automatic lights or you could adjust the lights. You know, you saw how it was kind of like dimming in the foreground where like the fish got, you know, a lot darker. There wasn't like a lot of light on them. So that's how you could adjust that here. Uh, you could also turn off sound and bubbles if you just want it to be like this, which is nice if you have it on and you don't want to be like distracted by all the sounds. So, yeah, visit us online for more fish. Where would this take you? I'm kind of curious. Okay, it's just a Go Microsoft redirect. There's no credits in here, so I wonder if this was a Microsoft, like if Microsoft made this or if they... Uh, like had contracted some other company to create this. So you got your display settings and all that. But let's go to the photos one because I feel like there should be options in here. Yeah, so you've got picture change speed. Yeah, here you go. So there's there's the cube, just what I thought. And you can also have a playlist going on in the background. You can hit shuffle there and we'll preview that. Oh yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> there's the cube. So that was a screenshot of the actual screensaver. We've got, yeah, you got a few different styles in your Ferris wheel. Okay, I don't think I've seen this before. So yeah, I got a lot of placeholder plus icons or images rather because we don't have, we only have four photos in here. So it's just using that as like a placeholder where it would have another photo. So yeah, pretty basic, you know, pretty cool. And so you got a few different styles. I think we were on the, the fade one, you got rolling. Ah, we picked a different song this time. We're the only other song in that playlist. So it rolls them onto the screen. Huh, that's a nice effect. Definitely like something you'd see in Windows Movie Maker 2.6 or something. I guess we can go through all these. Why not? We've already started. So we did fade. We did rolling. Album. Okay. Oh, so it's like a photo album. Okay. Really slow one at that, <laughs> like opening the pages here. Carousel, I don't think we did carousel, so let's preview that. Yeah, it's a carousel, a photo carousel. So next up, I guess we'll just jump back to the top here. So we've got the Da Vinci theme, so we'll preview this. I think some of these might have sound associated with them or sound you can turn on, but this one doesn't, at least by default. So yeah, there you go. Uh, we got Mercury Pool. Oh, actually, before we switch to that, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go to the settings and see what we got. Okay, so you can change the background speed and the machine change rate. All right, pretty simple. Mercury Pool. I do remember this one from my original Plus video. I vividly remember this for some reason. I don't know why it's specifically this one, but I do remember taking a look at this. Okay, you've got Cavern and Industrial. You can change the details. Let's see what the Industrial theme is. Oh, that's pretty cool. 
My pictures we took a look at, Nature is up next, which goes with the nature visual style or theme. So yeah, it's like a pond. You got some, some things floating around, some leaves falling down. So you can change the ripple frequency and the stream speed, leaf frequency, roaming camera. You can turn that on or off. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's definitely at high speed for sure. So yeah, that's nature. Robot Circus. Okay, that sounds interesting. Giving me like a Pixar vibe here for some reason. Uh, but, but yeah. So it's like a robot, I guess a robot circus. Uh, let's see what the settings are. Arena and camera orbit and coaster. So let's go to arena and change it to coaster. It kind of reminds me of GLaDOS's chamber in Portal and Portal 2. <laughs> like when you go in, you got like the circular room with her right in the center suspended from the ceiling. Sand Pendulum. I kind of remember this one too. And I assume the options are, are changing the speed and everything. Okay, scene, we can change that to checkerboard. Coaster, we can change that to orbit for the camera. Oh yeah, now this could be like a Vaporwave album cover or something. Just throw some palm trees and like some Japanese text or something. <laughs> on the screen and uh yeah just like a screenshot of this right here i don't know <laughs> but yeah and then you got the space one which is fitting because we have the space theme applied so there you go got an astronaut floating around in space you change the orbit speed that's about it slow medium and fast okay and yeah those are all the screensavers and so that that pretty much gets us to the games because we did like i said digital media the themes and the screensavers so let's jump to the uh now more plus i think takes you yeah you could go to the website and get more information about that visit us online for the latest plus developments and special offers exclusively for plus users hooray so we'll go to games now there's three games on here and we'll start with the uh, russian square plus edition Test your thinking and strategy skills in an addictive new game for fans of Tetris. The action will keep you coming back for more. So you got some themes here, neon, candy, and shapes. I think the neon one's definitely the coolest. Uh, you can pick some music, spin cycle, bubble matter, gravity ride, or none. And let's just hit new game and see if we can figure this out. So it's... Uh, Oh, I think you're, I think you have to align them like, yeah, like that. That's what it is. So you have to slowly like push these around. So like, let me see here. We got to do this. There we go. Wow. That was, that was pretty good. The uh, mouse speed in this is kind of screwing me up because it's rather, I wonder if we can change that up here. Uh, let's go to, oh, we can turn off the mouse and just use the keyboard. Yeah, that's actually going to be much better. Let me, uh, let me change the, the music here. Let's see what all the, or here rather, what all the music is. What all the different music is. I'm just letting the clock run out here. So that ticking, I don't think, is a part of the music. Or maybe it is. No, I don't think it was. But yeah, so there's Gravity Ride. We'll just leave it on that. And let's just restart a game. Okay, so. Oh, whoops, I'm doing that totally wrong. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's it. I won't spend, like, the entire video on it, but... Oh, and you can hit the... Oh. Okay, so you can hit the space key to, like... Okay, I see, I see. The Labyrinth Plus Edition rolls the classic tabletop labyrinth game into an amazing... Great pun there, Microsoft. 3D world filled with vibrant visuals and sounds. Test your skills with more than 40 unique and challenging levels. You'll never get bored. That is definitely a claim. I'm sure some people get bored watching if I did an entire video on all 40 levels. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we'll hit play put an mjd not mj uh okay i'm gonna turn down the audio here this is uh, a little bit loud there so okay arcade or race the clock let's do arcade practice makes perfect okay oh i remember this oh my gosh it's funny how like Certain things come back to you and certain things don't. 
So this is, you gotta, you know, follow the dots and try not to fall in the holes. Yay! Congratulations! And now you gotta collect things. Whatever these are, gems? Oh no. Now, do you have to collect the red ones, or are those ones to avoid? No, you do have to collect them. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I see. So the, the green ones are 50. The red ones are 100. Can you use the arrow keys? Oh, you can change your camera position with the arrow keys. Okay. Oh my gosh. I mean, the to be fair, the mouse acceleration is rather high. Can we change that? Might just have to go into control panel. No. Oh my. Oh, extra ball. Nice. I don't feel like you have to get all of the gems. Like, let's just see what happens if I just skip that one. Yeah, so you don't have to get all of them. But you'll, you'll get more points if you do, obviously, so... Frequent Flyer. So we'll do this one. Oh, look at the ball. Did it always have the, the exclamation mark on it? Or did I just notice that? I don't think it did. I guess this is a plus themed level. Oh my gosh, I can barely see the holes at the angle that I'm looking at this laptop. Because I'm off to the side here. Like, this is me putting my hands right in front of my face. So, because I have to do that to give you guys a direct line of sight at the laptop. So I'm kind of looking at the slide here. And so... Uh, the view angle is not so great, uh, so I did not see that. But anyway, let's go to main menu, because I want to see what this other level is. Oh, let's go to options, actually. Uh, game settings. There we go. Can lower that a little bit. And let's see what the other mode is. Race the clock. So this is going to be like a... Like, instead of it counting up for you to get the best time, it counts down. So you have to, at least I would think, so you have to do it in a certain amount of time. Yeah, time left. There you go. That's already much better. As I fall into one of the holes. And yeah, it doesn't look like the ball has the plus exclamation mark on it. So I think that was a thing. Or maybe it does, but the reflection it's doing off of the stage... ...makes it a little bit harder to see. Oh. Well, that's fancy. That's the thing, maybe the plus was just a reflection off the stage. You know what, I'm really thinking about this a lot for some reason. Oh my gosh, no, no, no. No! No! I could see me not getting bored with this game, at least for a while. And you can get a free add-on pack. Are you ready for the next challenge? But yeah, the last game is my absolute favorite out of this pack, and that's Hyper Bowl. Because I remember playing Hyper Bowl when I was younger, not the plus edition, or maybe it was, one of my friends had this on their computer, and when I go over to their house, I would always want to play it, and uh, I think I ended up finding like a trial or something, but yeah, anyway, so, it's like a bowling game, apparently it's frozen here, yeah, it's straight up frozen, oh, that's exciting, okay, I can't even hit control alt delete, what the heck, okay, there we go, <laughs> what the heck happened, uh, now we've got a blinking cursor? But we still have the sound effects. Like, I'm opening the start menu right now. What the heck happened? It just, like, crashed. So, yeah, Hyper Bowl. It's a bowling game from Hyper Entertainment. Oh, yeah, seizure warning, by the way. There's a lot of flashing stuff in this game. So, to pick your stage, you have to roll the ball to the stage you want. And you have a timer up there. I think you only have three. Or you only have two. I wonder if you can unlock more in this version, or if you, or if you're just limited to to those two. But yeah, so bowl. The way you bowl is by moving the mouse. So it's not really bowling in the sense that like you, you know, throw the ball and that's it. You actually control it like as you're going down the lane, and the lane's all windy and stuff. So it, it can be quite easy to get strikes if you just move your mouse properly. And yeah, you see you got a timer up there for how long you have to get down the track. See if we can do that again. All right, not enough power that time. Now, I, I won't go through an entire game here, but... Or I don't know, maybe we will. I mean, it won't take... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my gosh. 
As I just say, it's pretty easy to get strikes. I completely screw up. I'm having to, like, pick up... Oh, yeah, and there's stage hazards, too. That's right. That's right. So, th there are things that make it a bit difficult. Oh, come on. Come on. I can't imagine playing this with a trackpad. That would kind of suck. I mean, we could try it. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna suck. Alright, I, I think I changed my mind. I don't really want to go through the whole thing. Uh, let's just go to the other track. Or the lane, rather. So that was, um, that was this one on the right here. Pins of Rome. So we'll go to Classic. Yeah, we'll just start with Classic. Okay, so this is a lot simpler. Just a simple, like, straight lane. Just go down and just... There we go. I don't know what I really saw in this game, to be honest with you. I mean, it's cool, but, like, I think it would get kind of boring after a while. <laughs> uh... Because especially on this stage here, it's like there's not, there doesn't seem to be much of a challenge, you know? Like, you're just, you're just moving a ball, and you can easily, like, you know, it's like not, oh, I, crap, I screwed up. I mean, I guess you can wait out the clock to make it a little bit more challenging. But whatever, I mean, it's a game, you know, it was included here. I was going to say it was free, but it wasn't. You're paying 40 bucks for this package, or in the case of this guy, 32 95 or whatever it was. But, yeah, so that's Hyper Bowl. And that is it, guys. That is everything included in Microsoft Plus for XP. I have to say, personally, that this is my least favorite Plus pack. I definitely prefer 95 and 98 a lot more. They seem to have a lot more included in them. I think 98 is my favorite one out of the three original ones. There you have it. Still, I think it's a pretty neat package. Uh, was it worth 40 bucks back then? Well, I guess it would depend on uh, what you were looking for. If you wanted to have some games, if you wanted to have some additional media stuff, this very well might have been worth it to you. And yeah, that, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.